What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a feature that's coming up at Rhino 8 that can change the way that you model the push-pull tool. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, um, this is contained inside of the Rhino 8 beta. It's not currently contained inside of the official Rhino 7 version, which is the official version that's out right now. Um, this is kind of the beta version where they're trying out new features. Note that you shouldn't uninstall Rhino 7 if you download Rhino 8, and that um, if you want this to be, if you want the most stability, you should keep working in Rhino 7. But this is a tool coming up in the beta version that you should have access to if you have a Rhino license. And so if we jump over into Rhino, what this tool does is this is actually something which if you've used anything like SketchUp, you're actually going to be familiar with. And so this is a tool called Push Pull. The way that it works is if you type in Push Pull, and activate the tool, it's gonna to ask you to select a surface. And so notice I can mouse over this surface and I can click on an area to select it. And notice how when I do this, this is gonna show me either adding material or if I move my mouse this way, it's going to remove material. And notice how this is very effective working with the snaps in here. And so let's say that I wanted to extrude this back like this. This is going to recognize that surface, push pull it back and remove material right here. Now, if we were to run push pull again, we can select this surface and push pull down like this. And notice what it's gonna do is it's going to cut into this object right here and remove material. Now, one of the cool things about this is this actually recognizes the surfaces without you coming in here and splitting the face, right? So I drew this arc across this face and notice how I have not split this face, right? If I do a control shift and I select this surface, you can see how this is like a full surface like this. But if I run push pull and I click, notice how it automatically recognizes that surface on the face, even though I never split the face. That is a big time saver, at least for me. Now, one of the cool things about this is if we run a push pull, it's going to recognize if you push pull all the way across an object. So if I move my mouse back to the very back and click, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna see the back and it's going to automatically delete out that material, right? So right here, this like left the face in here, but this one, because we had the art go all the way along the surface, it actually recognizes this and deletes it. This is actually really important when we start adding doors and frames, which we can talk about a little bit later. Um, but this is a very effective way to like cut holes as well. And so one of the things I wanna do is, let's say I wanted to cut like a circular hole on the surface. Well, what I could do is I could do an auto C-plane. Um, you're gonna to wanna to select that and then do a control shift click. That's gonna put your plane aligned with this surface right here. Well, that means that now if I draw, right, if I type in circle, it's going to be aligned with this plane and I can draw on top of this face. Well, now if I run push pull, I click on this surface, and I move my mouse back. So I'm gonna hit enter so that I finalize my selection, but then I can move my mouse and you can type in a value if you want to as well. So say I wanted to move this back, maybe like 20, I'm gonna type in a value of 20 and hit the enter key. Well, that's gonna come in here and that's gonna cut a hole 20 millimeters back into this object. And so this actually works really well with the um, inset tool. So if I do a control shift click, select the surface, then I type in inset like this, that's gonna allow me to inset these edges along this surface. And you can type in whatever value you want, right? You can type in a two and hit enter. You could type in a one and hit enter. I'm gonna go ahead and inset this. But now if I run push pull, I can select this surface and I can push pull this back just like this. So super cool, super easy to use. All right, and so next up, we've got a function in here. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure if I'm using this one exactly right. But at the moment, you can't, for example, select like multiple surfaces and push pull them back. Um, that's not something that you can currently do. So if you have something like this where you wanna like cut into this house, that can get a little bit tricky right? Um, but if you run the push pull tool, like right now, if I click on this, it's going to basically extrude it in this direction, which isn't necessarily ideal, right? It's kind of like push pulling it down. And we want it to push pull in this direction right here. And so what we need to do is when we run this, we need to take this surface and we need to click on the option for direction. 
And then you can use this in order to set the direction by setting a base point and then a direction right here and then a distance like this. So you can use this to kind of push pull it back. It's not snapping exactly the way that I would expect it to. Like you would expect it to push pull in that direction so that it aligns with this edge right here. It's not exactly doing that. I don't know if that's kind of a work in progress thing or what, but I can push pull this back like this in order to get pretty close on that extrusion. So um, that's definitely an option. And one of the cool things about this is this this recognizes surfaces um, on faces that you might not otherwise. So for example, if I was to come in here and type in push pull right here and pick a surface, right? Notice how even though these edges are separate from this surface right here, it picks up on this, right? It picks up that that's been kind of split by edges and it sees that. And so you could use that in order to kind of push pull those in and out, right? So if I hit the inner key and then move my mouse, you could push pull this out or in, depending on what you want to do. And it's going to basically um, either thicken or remove material. And then I can push pull that back like that. And again, notice how it cuts out the material on these sides right here, which is extremely valuable, at least to me. And one other thing is if you do come in here and you run push pull, select that surface and then you decide that you don't want that. You could also invert your selection right here and notice how it picks up on that selection on this surface and it inverts it. So now I could push pull these in and out rather than the other one. So you can use this in order to quickly invert your selection. And so one of the places where I see this getting used the most, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a control shift click to select this surface, is cutting door and window openings, right? So if I type in like rectangle in here, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna draw like a window, we'll say. So something like this, I'm not really worried about the dimensions right now, something like this. And so again, notice how this is just a rectangle that I drew on top of the surface, right? But if I run push pull, then I click on this, and I hit the enter key, I can set my distance either by typing in a value or by just kind of mousing over a point that I can inference to. But notice how if you do this and it's the same thickness as this wall, it's going to cut an opening. So when it cuts that opening, um, making those door and window openings is a lot easier using this tool. So I'm very excited to see this added to Rhino. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know, is this something that you're interested in that you might find yourself using? I just love having that conversation with you guys. We can talk more about additional Rhino 8 features in future videos. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.